Hello and welcome back. Today I thought I would make a video about one of the most frequently asked questions that I get um, about my life here, which is how did I get my job working at a Korean company? So this video is not about how I got my teaching job that I did when I first came to Korea. It's about how I transitioned out of my teaching job here in Korea and moved into corporate work working in marketing for Korean companies. The first thing to really consider when you're looking at job opportunities in Korea is a visa. So there's a lot of different types of visa in Korea and they span a bunch of different work opportunities. There's visas for like factory work and like manual labor and also there's visas for like students in which you're allowed to do a certain number of hours of work a week. But I don't have any experience in those so I'm not going to be covering those um, today. But the first thing obviously you need to think about is your visa. The e-visa types, the e-2s, e-7s, e-6s, those are limited work scope visas. So to explain this a little bit easier, everybody who comes to Korea and works as an English teacher or most are on e-2 visas, which is a type of work visa that is only very specifically for teaching conversational English. So you, it is illegal for you to do any kind of work outside of that narrow scope of work. So the e-visas are all more specific visas that are supported by a company. And E7 is another specialized work visa, but that is for different types of jobs. So you can have like uh, marketing, IT, a specific area, but that is sponsored by your company. E6 is an entertainment visa. That's what people who are models or actors are on. Your stay in Korea is sponsored or supported by either your entertainment agency, your school, or your company. So what I did is I went from an E-type visa to an F-type visa, and I got the F2-7, and I made an entire video about how I got that visa. It is in 360p for some reason. Anyway, that video is linked up here. It's a whole journey, but basically, I got my own visa. The F-type visas are all longer-term visas, resident visas. This is where you have your permanent resident visa. F2-7 is a resident visa. Your marriage visa, I believe that's an F F6. If you are a Korean by blood, you can get a special resident visa as well. F visas are visas that are tied to you being a person. You know, like you are the only thing <laughs> in charge of yourself, which is terrifying. So if you're looking to get a job in Korea, you need to ask yourself, am I eligible for one of these F-type visas? Or am I somebody who is maybe eligible to get an E-type visa? If you're looking to get into the corporate side of Korea, what you would be looking for for the E-visas would be an E-7 visa, which I have a few friends, I know a few people who are on E-7 visas, which is sponsored by the company. For the E-7 visa, you have to renew it every year, whereas for F-type visas, some of them you only have to renew every two years or every five years if you're lucky. And there's not really anything that your company has to do to help you out with getting this type of visa. So. In my experience, it was e just easier for me to get an F-type visa. I had the points I needed. Your scope of work is very broad, so I could do freelance work. If I wanted to do modeling and acting, I could do modeling and acting. And if I wanted to go, you know, work as a teacher, I could work as a teacher. And if I wanted to work for a company, I could work for a company. And there would be no issues there. The point is, with an F-type visa, you can do all sorts of work. And also, your company does not need to sponsor you. So it gives you more freedom when looking for jobs. If you do not have a eligible work visa, you're looking for a company to think that you bring them enough value to sponsor your visa, which involves money in on their part, time in on their part, oftentimes hiring a lawyer to go with somebody to immigration. It's kind of an intense process and it requires some paperwork and also some know-how that a lot of companies maybe don't have about how living as a foreigner works in Korea. Working with immigration is something that a lot of companies maybe aren't necessarily cut out to do. So it's just another bunch of hoops for them to jump through. But I do have a lot of friends who work for big Korean companies, good Korean companies, people at my company who are on E7 visas. So those are the two types of visas that I think are the best when looking for a corporate position in Korea is any kind of F-type visa which are harder to get and often require years of living in Korea or a master's degree or an E-type visa and those are basically granted based on your experience in a certain field. You basically have to prove that you are doing this and <laughs> there's a reason that they should hire you and not, uh, you know, like a Korean. Like, 
I'm specialized, I have the backup knowledge, I have these years of experience and I can do it. It's necessary to show that your degree and your work experience is relevant to the job that you're doing very kind of narrow that is the e7 visa so that's the first thing out of the way i would argue the biggest hurdle is your visa eligibility so then once you you know figure out how you're going to even be eligible to work you have to start thinking about how to find companies and how to apply to jobs and stuff like that and that also is a little bit tricky so let's talk about like where to look for jobs in korea in korea there are job finding sites kind of similar to like I guess like a LinkedIn Indeed type stuff right and those are I believe the most popular ones are like Job Korea and like Saramin however I wouldn't go to Korean job site the opportunities available for foreigners in Korea it's a very narrow subset of the total jobs in Korea and when you go on one of those job hunting websites the chances that they are looking for foreign workers to take these positions is very low your best chance of getting hired as somebody who is not a Korean is by doing a job that Koreans can't do. So you need to consider what that is. What are you bringing to the table? Is it international marketing know-how from like your home country? Is it your language abilities? You need to kind of know where your niche is. The majority of the jobs on these kind of websites like Job Korea and Sadamin are jobs that are you could apply to, but they're usually looking for Korean applicants so it can be kind of time consuming to sift through all of the positions on there and find ones that you think they might hire a foreigner for. So what works for me is um, a combination of job hunting platforms and that would be LinkedIn, Craigslist, and Facebook groups. Now I know that sounds kind of crazy but Craigslist is actually a pretty good place to look for jobs in Korea. Now is it going to be big companies that you know the name of? No. Are they all the most reputable places? No. But some companies do post jobs, especially in English or gigs. There's a lot of gigs on Craigslist. So if you are looking for internship experience or freelance experience, Craigslist is a good place to find those kind of um, jobs. And you know, I don't think I would ever look for a job on Craigslist in America, but you know, in Korea, I think it's a good place to look around. Facebook groups are a big part of the expat community in Korea. There's a Facebook group for everything here. They're very, very useful. A lot of information can be found in Facebook groups. If you have any kind of questions, that's really where you really got to go. And so there's quite a few Facebook groups that are called um, non-teaching job seekers in Korea. I believe there's two or three. The jobs posted in those groups are specifically targeted to people who are not Korean or jobs that require an international know-how or language skills or something along those lines. There's not necessarily a large number of job postings in those groups, but there's a pretty steady trickle. So it is a good place to follow and just, you know, browse and see what comes up in those groups. How I found my position is on LinkedIn. Though LinkedIn is not necessarily as popular for Korean companies looking for Korean employees, it is a good place to find a lot of international companies or find a lot of Korean companies looking for international or foreign hires. So LinkedIn is definitely the place that I would recommend the most for looking for a legitimate job in corporate Korean companies. Let's say you've got your visa sorted, you know where to look for jobs. How do you go about actually successfully getting a job? One thing that I think is absolutely necessary when you are looking for a job in Korea is Korean. It sounds like it would be a no-brainer, but you would be surprised by the number of people who I've seen posting in Facebook groups and stuff like that who say, I want to work in Korea, I have these this experience, how can I find a job? I don't speak any Korean. You can find a job if you don't speak Korean in Korea, but it will be very, very difficult. One of the things that Korean companies look for is a level of Korean. Now, you don't need to be at a very proficient level of Korean. You do not need to be fluent. You do not need to be able to discuss philosophy in Korean to have a, Korean, a job in a Korean company. What most Korean companies look for from their foreign employees is an ability to just have conversations with your coworkers and understand things at a base level so that communication is not made any more difficult by you being a foreign employee. Personally, I think that around level three of Korean is adequate. There are opportunities that don't require you to speak in Korean for the main part of your job. However, it is very important for you as a candidate to show a willingness 
to be able to communicate and understand the culture that you're working in. If you are living in a country, I think it is your responsibility if you're aiming to work there to at least be actively trying to better yourself in the language, right? You don't need to be perfect, but a willingness to learn and an active drive to be learning the language is vital to finding a job in Korea. Another interesting thing to note is that Korean resumes are actually quite different from resumes that you might be used to if you're coming from, you know, the US or Europe. The Korean resume has a very specific layout and one thing that you absolutely need is a picture on your resume. A lot of people have their pictures on their resume. I would go get a professional picture taken at a photo studio anywhere around you in Korea or, you know, just a white background professional head-on headshot. It's definitely worth looking up how Korean resumes are written and if you are applying to positions that require some level of Korean, it might be good to both have a Korean resume and a English version of your resume. One part of a traditional Korean resume is called like the Chagi Sogeso, which is basically a document that introduces yourself, essentially the equivalent of a cover letter. And so that's just like, here's a little bit about me and the experience that I bring and why I want to work for your company. You will be asked if you are interviewing in Korean to introduce yourself with your Chagi Soge, which is your self introduction. So it's very important to have a self introduction prepared. Um, that you can just rattle off the top of your head. Even though you can't control what questions they're gonna ask you, which can be quite nerve-wracking for, you know, somebody who is interviewing in a second language, like, what if I don't know this word, or what if I don't understand what they're saying, but a good, strong chagi soge is definitely something that you can, or self-introduction, is definitely something that you can memorize and bank on and at least bring that to the table. You have your visa, you know where to look for jobs, you got your resume, you tailored it a little bit for Korean companies, you're learning Korean. And then next is just perseverance, I guess. I know a lot of people who spent quite some time looking for jobs. The job market in Korea is very competitive even for Koreans. So obviously with a fewer number of jobs that are specifically tailored for foreign workers, it's even more difficult to find positions. I would encourage everybody to do research into the companies that they are interviewing at. There are Korean websites, kind of like Glassdoor, that former employees can leave ratings on. Even if your level of Korean is not that high, you can just Google Translate the page. I would highly recommend looking into the Korean company that you're working for because it's very important that you feel comfortable in the work environment of a Korean company, and that can be very, very different from a Western company environment. Um, I am very fortunate in that my company culture is very relaxed and very chill for a Korean company, but a lot of Korean companies might be more traditional Korean Korean with their hui sheiks or like company dinners that you can't get out of and can't say no to, and they're forced overtime. So those are definitely things to ask about is the culture of the company and whether or not it's right for you. If you feel like that's something that you really want is the full Korean experience of having to drink with your boss until 2 a.m. on a Wednesday, then that's on you, you can do that. But um, it's very important in the interview to ask those questions about the company culture because if you're coming at it from a westernized perspective, it might be a big shock when you join a company and have to work overtime even though you don't have any work to do. In Korea, most work hours are 9 to 6 or 10 to 7, uh, which is different from, I believe, in America it's 9 to 5, but you do get an hour lunch break in Korea, so that's great. There's a lot of overtime, there's a lot of structure, but every single company is different and Korean companies are changing ever so slightly to be slightly more westernized and have less of a hierarchy in the company and so it's very important that you ask questions about the company culture and see if it will mesh well with what you are looking for. I did go to a few interviews where I was very uncomfortable in the interview and I just got really bad vibes from the company and they offered me a position and I turned it down because even though I you know, wanted a full-time job, I felt like the company culture was not right for me and so I turned it down and I'm very happy that I waited to find a place that was a good fit for me and I very much enjoy the company that I work for now. That's all my advice for the process of getting a job in Korea and 
I'll go into my story really briefly. So like I said, I got, I was teaching and then while I was teaching, I went through the whole process to get my own visa and that included Korean proficiency. So by the time I got my own visa in 2020, I had a high level of Korean, but all I had was English experience. So in March of 2021, after my contract finished at my teaching job, I started an internship at a small little startup and gained a lot of experience very fast. And after that internship was up, I decided I did not want to continue in that position and did some freelance work and freelance proofreading, freelance writing, and just like gigs here and there to get more experience and also, you know, earn money. And all that while I was looking for job opportunities, after about four months of looking for jobs and going to interviews and going through the process, you know, sometimes there's two, three levels of interviews here in Korea and I know it's similar in other companies but it can be quite disheartening when you go through three rounds of interviews just to be told that you're not being um, chosen but you know, what are you gonna do? So after a few months of you know that, my current company uh, which I had previously applied to on LinkedIn I they were hiring again so they reached out to me so that was my personal journey and those are my tips that I have for you if you are looking to get a job, a corporate job in Korea. I wish you the best of luck and encourage you to ask the people who take your picture not to use a lot of Photoshop because you will look monstrous, I do. Um, yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope this helped somebody who is looking for a job in Korea or is interested in working here. If you have any questions or anything, you can leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to respond to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Um, bringing experience to the table, very, very important. If you don't have experience, try and get some. <laughs> Get good.